OK. So it is my joy to introduce Fern Bishop, who will talk to you about the visualization jungle. <laughs> Oh, I am mic'd. Cool, everyone can hear me, right? Um, it's very weird being able to hear yourself. Uh, so as you said, uh, my name is Fern. I'm a PhD student at St. Andrews and I work in visualization, but don't worry, that doesn't really mean that I know an awful lot. So if you have any questions or you want to tell me no about something I say, then please do. Um, so what I'm gonna talk to you about today is the visualization jungle. So. Probably you've all seen visualization, I'll talk a little bit about what that is, but it's not always very obvious when things are going wrong. Um, and it's useful to sort of have an idea of the different ways visualization can be done um, so that you can notice it. So let's start by talking about what visualization is. And this is the most important visualization you'll see today, uh, how much pie I've eaten and how much pie I have left to eat. And. Uh, <laughs> It's a very awkward visualization because really you both want both halves to be as big as possible, um, which doesn't geometrically work. Um, but the idea is that visualization is, the way, uh, is a way of representing data visually so that you can understand it. So if I show you just a set of numbers, then it's really hard to tell if something is going on with them. Um, you've probably seen some things like this. Um, these are all very common visualizations which you will see um, out and about, you'll see them in the news. You probably have had to use them at work, things like that. Uh, and as you can see just from this, there are a great variety of visualizations and they all work in very different ways. And like I said, it is very hard to know what is going on when you're just using numbers. So if I show you this data set here, this is four sets of data. Uh, I'm so sorry. Did I break everything? No, it's fine. Uh, Okay, so if you see there's columns going down, one, two, three, four, um, and those are all x, y coordinates. And if you do some basic statistical analysis on them, they all look about the same. The sum is the same, the average is the same. They all move around in what seems like kind of similar ways. But if you plot them, then you'll see that actually they are very different. Um, this particular set of data is called Anscombe's razor. Uh, Hanscom's Quartet, and it makes it very easy to, maybe I should stop wandering around so much, huh? Um, it makes it very easy to see why visualization is powerful, because a lot of these things are very different. Um, so you can see some of them very spread out, some of them have very solidly defined lines, but if you try and draw through them, they all sort of seem like they have the same statistical properties. Uh, so why is visualization so powerful? Well, it's really quite new. Um, in terms of writing, humans have been doing it for about 5,000 years. Uh, but we've had to use our eyes for a lot longer than that. Anatomically correct humans happened about 200,000 years ago. So there's 195,000 years of difference in that. Uh, and throughout all of that time, we've needed to run from lions and tigers that are chasing us mercilessly, and we've had to find delicious berries. Uh, so our visual cortex, has, uh, our visual senses have gotten very good at, um, at noticing things that stick out, which makes us very good at spotting patterns. But not always is it so easy to tell when something is going wrong in visualization. So what I want to do is take you through some visualizations that have made me angry in the past and uh, talk about why they make me so angry. And at the end of this talk, I'll also give you some guidelines for how to not do that. Uh, so if we start with what is quite a simple one, uh, these are salaries in tax. So we have people who are paid too much, the top of the cream, cream of the crop. We have people who are paid enough. And uh, does anyone want to have a guess at what the third section would be? Paid, sorry? All of us. All of us, yeah. Um, probably not. Uh, so in, in this visualization, it was women. Um, and <laughs> welcome to why this annoys me. I am happy to say in this particular instance, it was a parody uh, 
from a very good set of visualizations which are highlighting some of the diversity problems in tech. But you will occasionally see visualizations that do this. It's basically trying to compare two things that are not the same. So if we're taking a tour through the visualization jungle, what kind of doesn't make sense? What is a bit split? Well, well, it's kind of like a platypus, right? It's, it's kind of a duck, it's kind of an otter, it kind of doesn't really know what it is. Uh, let's move on to the next visualization. We're all in the UK, so we probably all like our pubs. And uh, this map is of every pub in the UK. And you can probably tell that it is not a very useful map. Uh, would anyone like to try and point out their local to me on this? <laughs> um, so as you can tell, it's quite hard. And really, the problem here is that there is too much data, which is another really easy thing to do in visualization, to say, I need, I need to show everything, so I'm going to put it all into a graph. But if you put too much in, you can't see anything. Uh, if we're going to go for the animal comparison again, I'm sorry, this next image wigs me out a little bit, but it's kind of like ants. You know, when you see a whole group of ants moving around, you can't actually pick out a single ant anymore. They just become a cluster, they become an identity of their own. Uh, can anyone see what's up with this visualization? Why yeah, y-axis. So if you were to look at the, uh, the height of the people in this, you would, you would have to believe that men in the Netherlands are about three times as big as people from the Philippines, um, which is probably not true. I don't know. I've never been to the Philippines, but I've been to the Netherlands and they weren't that tall. Um, maybe people in the Philippines are really short. Probably something is going on. And someone called out it's the y-axis. The y-axis here is starting at 1.5, which is really exaggerating this change. So uh, what animals do we know that have a bit of a problem with scale? Uh, I, think, I think the giraffes, right? Giraffes have a real issue. Their head is so much higher than everything else. And it, it's just a little bit nonsensical. Um, here is a useful trick if you want to tell your boss you're doing well when you're not actually doing that well. Um, so, <laughs> for those who are lagging behind, uh, it took me a little while. Actually, you guys were all pretty on the ball. Uh, this is cumulative annual revenue, which means you take one year and then you add the next year's revenue on top of it. And you just keep adding up. So it will always go up. And as you can probably see, there is a little bit of a curve at the bottom. And perhaps you can see what is coming next. If I show you the actual annual review, it ain't so pretty. <laughs> um, so what, what do we know? Uh, this is basically a good trick because you're picking your data, right? You're, you're deciding what you want to show, and you're choosing it accordingly. You're being very picky. Uh, the most picky animal I can think of is the panda, who lives solely on bamboo. Um, and also looks very cute, but uh, I promise this wasn't just an excuse to put a panda in my presentation. Uh, we're going to move on to one that makes me a little bit angry, and then you'll see me get a lot more angry afterwards. Um, so... <laughs> It's really nice because I don't need to present at all. I can just show you the visualizations and leave you to get on with it. Um, so the problem here is that uh, it doesn't actually have any relationship uh, between the data and the bars. 13% isn't five times as big as 34%. Uh, but one of the reasons that I particularly wanted to give this talk is you may have noticed what's going on in the bottom right of that. Uh, visualization, which is that it was presented on NBC News. These aren't just things that someone is slipping under the table in their weekly meetings with their boss. Like These are things that are being used in the news to deceive people, which is bad. So um, in this particular case, we're going to go for an animal. Uh, I think this is quite egregious. They are, they are lying at this point. So uh, we're going to go with the most heinous of creatures, and we have encountered the, uh, the evil hyena. And um, this is the last of the lions, tigers, and bears, of which you have seen no actual lions, tigers, or bears. Um, this visualization, it's kind of tricky to spot what's going on, which is one of the reasons it's so dangerous. Can anyone spot it? 
Yeah, so y-axis, but for a different reason. This time, instead of just being cut, it's been flipped. So um, this particular visualization was showing Gondas in Florida after the in instigation of a particularly egregious um, law. Um, and if you see, it looks like it's going down. But if you reverse the y-axis, it actually had a pretty significant impact going up, which makes me really angry because there is no way that wasn't intentional. Um, so um, I, for some reason, I've given this a pretty cute animal, even though it makes me very angry. But the problem is that it blends in just like a chameleon. It is very hard to spot when people do a trick like that. So. Let's talk about how to not do these things. Um, making good visualizations is challenging, and there are some guidelines I can give you. But the first thing I'm going to tell you is that everything I'm about to say will be wrong at some point in time. Uh, there are always reasons to break the rules. I think we all know rule breaking can sometimes have more significant impact. But you need to be careful about when you're doing it and when you're not. So the first thing is you can use appropriate visualizations. Uh, the source on this slide uh, is a really good website called the DataViz Project. They have an excellent selection of visualization types. They'll help you figure out what you want to use. So for example, bar charts are really good if you want to compare, uh, just compare numbers because we're very good at comparing heights because we always want to know how many more berries we're getting. So figuring out larger quantities is something that our visual system is uh, pretty well attuned to. Um, pie charts are good for showing parts of a whole. Maps are good if you're doing location-based stuff. Uh, before anyone shouts at me who is into visualization, uh, some people don't like pie charts because we're not very good at judging angle. Uh, so you can just turn it into squares and then it is a little bit easier to judge. You can do it, you cannot do it. I'm not here to preach for or against pie charts. That's someone else's problem. Um, you can use meaningful colors. Um, so in the example we have here, we're showing the colors of fruits and it is quite natural to use the color of the fruit that you're showing. Um, my personal work is working with young children, creating visualizations to look at how they do it. And I see this in primary school children, even if it doesn't always make sense. Like I've had people say, I made this red because maths is hard. <laughs> um, they, they'll, you look for meaning in colors. Um, so it, if there is the possibility of using a meaningful color, then do. Um, one of the places this trips up is gender, like pink and blue, and sometimes people are a bit unsure about that. If you really want to break conventions, then use completely different colors. Don't use pink or blue, use red and green or something that colorblind people won't be angry at you for. Um, but don't just use pink and something else because it makes it harder to spot that you've done that. Um, Follow conventions. So we've talked about the y-axis a couple of times. Usually zero is at the bottom. So unless you have a really good reason for flipping it, don't. Uh, seems simple, apparently not. Um, and use sensible scales. There are times at which a small change is significant. For example, if, uh, if it was one degree hotter here today, you would maybe care about that. And so you would truncate the y-axis in order to show that variance. Uh, also common in stock markets. But in heights, it, the way that this ended up visually, it made no sense. Um, filter and highlight your data. Like I said, uh, sometimes you have a lot of things you want to tell people, and that is OK. But you need to help them pick out the important parts. So uh, rather than showing every pub in the UK, I live in St Andrews. I really only care about where the ones in St Andrews are on a day-to-day -day basis. So I tend to not look at where every pub in the UK is as much as that would be a really good road trip. Um, if, you, if you can't filter, then you can highlight. So in this second section here, you've got a couple of points that are important that have been shown in bold. Uh, you can also do small multiples. You can have like multiple visualizations so showing lots of different things. Uh, simplify where possible. Everyone loves the underground map. It is the coolest of all maps. If you try and navigate London above London on the underground map, you will 
end up very lost very quickly uh, because it has no relationship to how London is actually laid out. But when you just need to know what connection to get on an underground, it's fine. It's okay to simplify things so long as the mes message that you're showing is true to what the data is showing and you're not trying to distort it in some way. Uh, talking about not trying to distort it in some way, don't lie. Um, that one seems quite obvious, but I'm going to put it up here anyway. This is what that chart should have looked like. You can see it's not that close. Um, so to summarize all of those points, don't defy expectations. Like, it, it really is that simple. Just stop and think about how you're doing it and is it the way that makes the most sense. And if it isn't, change something. Uh, go on the internet and look at what other people would do. Um, I'm going to take you through a really cool visualization which tells a story, which is one of the ways of helping things be more memorable. Has anyone seen this visualization before? Hey, cool. So this is a really neato visualization, uh, which is also very, very old. It shows uh, Napoleon's march on Moscow. It does it in a very interesting way. You can see the whole journey. So you can see the number of troops he's had at the start. That's the beige, um, the beige line, and you can see it dwindling. Uh, as this march occurred, so he was marching on Moscow, and the Russians were pulling back and uh, removing removing things from the land as he went. So a lot of soldiers uh, had trouble, not because of fighting, but because of other reasons. Uh, and so this is the number coming back. So you can see him going back the way and the continuation of the dwindle. And you can pick out really interesting points in this visualization because you can see like where a camp split off and then rejoined on the march back and suddenly the numbers jump up again. And you can also see the effect that temperature had over time on the march back. Uh, a few more interesting visualizations, and I think another really useful way of showing how a visualization can tell you so much more just by how you look at it is, can anyone tell me what the, where the one on the right is located? New York, New York right. It, it's very simple because it has that big blank space in the middle, which is Central Park. That's one of the powers of using maps for um, geography-based information is that you can see see where things are. Um, maps, great, huh? <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Um, you can see the one in the middle has a very strong visual impact because there are a lot of animals clumped at the top. This is the lifespan of those animals. And you can see the poor, lonely tortoise taking a really long time, but living for a very long time too. Um, the important thing to remember is if you're making visualization, people aren't going to spend that long looking at it. You're going to spend a really long time making it, and they're going to look at it for 10 seconds. Uh, or not, if it's a really beautiful visualization that tells a story. Um, but just as assume that they won't. Make it as easy as possible to read. Uh, and remember, they may just be skimming. Um, so in summary, visualization is great. Um, but it, it isn't always accurate as you've seen. Um, think about the visualization you're looking at when you see it, even if it's in a trusted news source, because sometimes people just lie. <laughs> um, sorry, it's a little bit of a bee in my bonnet. Uh, stick to conventions if you're making them. And uh, go ahead and like look at interesting things on the internet. Um, I've got a web page that I'll put up at the end which is the next slide in case anyone's desperate to leave, um, where I've got some uh, links for those who are interested and you're welcome to come and talk to me. So um, thank you for your time. Uh, do we have time for questions? Like five minutes for questions if you wanna. Uh, otherwise I'll go and sit outside and you're welcome to come and talk to me. Um, and yeah, I've got some related reading if anyone's interested. Thank you for joining me on this tour. Okay, do you have any tips for visualizing multivariate data? Because this, of course, is some way you can lie with your data is just hide it in some relationship between two variables. Small multiples. Um, so 
the idea of small multiples is that rather than have everything, having everything in like one visualization, you try and split out meaningful bits into separate visualizations. Um, and you might end up overlaying things, but it can be helpful. I'd need to look at the data just... You saw nothing. Say more, but uh, come talk to me afterwards and we can talk about it more. Are there any... We have time for, for more questions. Other hands? Okay. In that case, yeah, th thank you very much for coming.